bait being uh, 10 bucks a package for eight of these larger ones, this is a hell of a way to save some money and have good bait. Yeah. And everybody enjoys it. Yeah, it's fun. Different. It's fun. I got families that come out here and we go halibut fishing and they're like, can we go back and do the herring? Mm -hmm. And I'll come back and fill buckets of herring. Yeah, he's loading on them. 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 He's Stop. Okay, lift. Oh, lift. The ground will bear its job. Good job. Want to eat one? There's a pullout, right? Is that fish would have to have in the corner. We're gonna do a little bit of herring jigging a little later. I just want to try this spot, and I haven't fished here yet this year, but uh, I wanted to try it on this outgoing because this spot is pretty much dominant um, outgoing. Once the tide starts coming in, this spot doesn't produce as well. These are two of the herring jigs that I run. One's in a size eight, the other one's in a 10. One's got gold hooks with little glass beads. Uh, this one's silver but it's got these little wax paper wings and a little glow-in-the-dark bead on them and they you rig them the same they have a ball bearing swivel at the top and this pipe insulator um these things went up to six seven bucks a piece so i try to maintain them and keep them um as long as i can but you'll have a ball bearing swivel at the top everybody's coming out here and this one you will clip onto your main line like so and the way i've got them on here is you just unroll it you might have to if you can't go bottom you might have to and these little hooks don't look very intimidating but they're super sharp and if they get in your skin um, you try to get a hold of them with pliers, pull them out, a lot of times they break, and then you got to dig them out. So, always keep them away from whoever's helping you rig up. And then I'm going to run, Con, can I get underneath there? I am going to run a 6 or an 8 ounce sinker. This is a 6. And you just, the bottom one will always have the snap swivel and then you just hook it on there and we were marking some bait so i was going to try to fish them but i don't see them now and of course since i got it all geared up <clears throat> the technique with this thing is to always have your sinker and your reel about the same distance so I've got multiple rods. We're all going to be fishing different rod lengths here in a little bit when we go after some herring. And if the rod's longer or shorter, then the amount of distance between that top swivel and the tip of the rod will be different. So whatever you do, you just I like to rule of thumb when I tell everybody to do this. I look at the sinker and the reel and keep them about the same distance. So now I know there's about two feet from the top of that swivel to the tip of the rod. Is it getting a bite? Or is it hitting bottom? Thank you, Cam. So, when you deploy these, you just free spool them. Always recount the line counters if you got them because the fish, if we see them on that Garmin uh, unit up there, You'll be able to, I'll tell you, 95 feet or 120 feet or whatever, and you can dial them in and go right to it. So what I'm going to do, yeah, we're getting swung over towards the bluff. Okay, there's bottom. Then I want to reel down a little bit, and I'm just going to long, slow jig it off of bottom. 
It's just a long, slow jig to keep those little hooks moving. And if I feel any kind of vibration or jiggling, we'll go over this a little bit because we're going to go catch a bunch. If you feel it like that, you want to stop right away. If you have a bite of the, one of those little herring and you keep jigging it, they will come off. So you've got to keep these little hooks moving. But then as soon as you get a bite, that one herring that's on that one hook will keep your whole string moving. And you want to stay right in the school. So then you count to about 12 or 15 until every hook hopefully is loaded. And when you do that, then you reel up. And you don't burn it in, you know, just, you're not firing it up because they got little tiny mouths and they're really paper soft. And so what I like to do is I like, I know the diff, I know the distance between the tip of the rod and that swivel, that top swivel. It's about two feet. So I try to hold the rod tip about a foot and a half to two feet until I can see it. <clears throat> Okay, so there's my swivel. I can see it. And I don't pick the herring out of the water. If I had some on, I wouldn't pick them. I don't have any right here. But if I did, I wouldn't pick them up. If you pick them up and hold them out here, then they start falling off in the water. So what you want to do is you want to leave your swivel about where the water is. Make sure the boat's clear because everybody's going to be catching some, hopefully. And when you pick it up, you bring it straight back and you catch your sinker and you hold your rod you turn, get over the boat so they fall on the boat if any fall off, but then you hang on to your rod and your sinker and you keep your rod and your sinker apart so that all these little hooks don't get tangled up on your pole. But we'll go over that a little bit later. It's just something we're going to be doing. Yep. Con's on it. I got it. That's fun. It is fun. Like okay, it. so there's a ball. What's the depth on those, Josh? It's right off the bottom. Take a look up there. Oh, see the lines on the see the lines on the Garmin too up there. See the bait coming into the screen. Zoom yeah. in on the screen. Top of it's about 150. Oh man, we're getting a bunch coming in. See the screen up there? Yeah, you got many more from 150. See the screen? See the lines going up and down vertically? Those are the my sinker going down and coming back up. Yeah, if you're fishing about 160, 170 with that, you'd be right in them. So we'll see what it is down there. You can see my line, I dropped right through the middle of the school. Uh -huh. Uh-uh. Not yet. When you're not catching any fish, you gotta hydrate. Yep. That's true. We won't say how early it is. Yeah. <laughs> Scores breakfast. Yeah, exactly. Here are the dogs. That's right. Maybe we can get a Coors Light sponsor. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, dude. Oh, sorry, you're on vacation. That's what it's supposed to be about. All right. Oh, Fish flying everywhere. Yeah. Hopefully, we can turn them into some bigger fish. That's perfect. Well, I'm staying right here for a little bit. I'm trying to not hit Kim in the pole. <laughs> <laughs>